Hey there rocket enthusiasts and science lovers. This week, I thought it'd be important to go over four basic solid rocket fuel formulas. But first off, how does combustion occur? Combustion occurs when you have three key parts. Those three key parts are called the combustion triangle. The combustion triangle consists of fuel, oxygen, and a heat source to ignite those. When you have those three, you have a combustion. For a simple wood fire to take place, this is easy. This is because our atmosphere contains 21% oxygen, but this is not so when we have a tightly packed engine. This tightly packed engine is in a little tiny casing which air cannot enter. How do we get oxygen in these tightly packed engines? Well, you add an oxidizing agent in the original mix. An oxidizer is a chemical compound which contains the element oxygen. What that does when mixed with our other fuel is it allows the oxygen to be put straight into the mix and compacted into our container. The four oxidizers we'll be using are ammonium nitrate, potassium nitrate, sulfur, and iron oxide. Now that we have plenty of oxygen, we need a fuel to burn with it. A fuel is a material that can store potential energy. One of our fuels, sucrose sugar, is a carbohydrate. Another is magnesium, a metal. The last is charcoal, a partially combusted hardwood. Composite fuels almost always contain a binder. A binder serves as an agent which binds the oxidizer and the fuel together, forming a final rubbery product. Some binders even serve as a fuel. The first fuel I'll be going over is a fuel nicknamed R candy. It's called R candy because you make the fuel by melting sugar, just like you would make a hard candy like Jolly Ranchers. Except that you would add an oxidizer to the mix, and last time I checked, I don't think you had an oxidizer to Jolly Ranchers. Our candy consists of 65% potassium nitrate and 35% sucrose sugar. This fuel is a common first fuel because it needs no binder. This is because the sugar in the mixture melts when cooked, effectively binding the fuel together. And it's easy to get your hands on a little fertilizer and some table sugar. This fuel can also be dry compressed into a cast, but to cook this fuel, you pour the dry our candy into a pot and then add just enough water to dissolve it. You then place that pot on an electric stove, boiling the water off until the mix reaches a nice mashed potato-like consistency. For more on this method, please watch this video. So now comes the time where we can mix our first fuel, our candy. Like I said, our candy consists of 65% potassium nitrate and 35% circular sugar. So again, for our fuel, this table sugar will work fine. And for our oxidizer, potassium nitrate. And I buy most of my chemicals on eBay. I bought this potassium nitrate, uh, 10 pounds of it for probably about $30. So now we weigh out our individual parts. And so since the ratio is 65 to 35, then for a 50 gram batch, we can do 32.5 grams of potassium nitrate and 17.5 grams of sugar. You can always double check your ratio by knowing that we want to make a 50 gram batch. So when you mix, you can see it's about 50. And if you're, if you're within plus or minus a gram, it's fine. So we have our 50 grams of our candy we made. Let's give it a test. Shut out this. Our second fuel is an alteration of the original R candy formula. It's written as 64% potassium nitrate, 34% sucrose sugar, and 2% iron oxide. 
This added iron oxide increases the speed and efficiency of the burn by adding more oxygen. Our second fuel, which is the alteration of the original R candy formula, uh, again, it was 64% potassium nitrate, 34% sucrose sugar, and added 2% iron oxide for that extra kick of oxidation to get that higher uh, burn rate. And that's our second fuel. Here we have our arcane mix, enhanced with our red iron oxide, which gives it a higher burn rate since it has a higher oxidation. So this is 50 grams. Next, we'll be going over black powder. Black powder was the very first explosive and propellant invented by the Chinese all the way back in the 9th century. This powder is made up of 75% potassium nitrate, 15% charcoal, and 10% sulfur. It, the fuel is best off dry compressed in your motor casing, but after its initial mixing, remember, it's not yet at full strength. To achieve full strength, you have to wet the powder down until a darker color is achieved and let it dry. While the powder is wet, it can be pushed through a window screen to form grains. So now for our mixing our black powder. So our black powder, once again, is 75% potassium nitrate, 15% charcoal, and 10% sulfur. So then, again, in a 50 gram batch, you have 37.5 grams of potassium nitrate, 7.5 grams of charcoal, and 5 grams of sulfur. Black powder. Here's our black powder mix with 75% uh, potassium nitrate, 15% charcoal, and 10% sulfur. The potassium nitrate again is an oxidizer, the sulfur also acts as an oxidizer, and then the charcoal is the fuel. Last but not least, we'll be making a composite type fuel. A composite type fuel is the one that was generally thought of as a mix that included a binder that created that final rubber-like consistency. Also, in some cases, the binder can serve as a fuel. In this mixture, we'll have 60% ammonium nitrate, 20% magnesium, and 20% of a polymer binder known as R20LM. So now it's time for our final uh, composite fuel. Our composite fuel, again, uh, requires a binder. It's a more stable type fuel. It's the you know most likely to be found in military type rockets, uh, but most of those have uh, ammonium perchlorate, but I have ammonium nitrate. 
So yeah, well, we have we well, have a sixty percent ammonium nitrate as the oxidizer, twenty percent magnesium as the fuel, and twenty percent of a polymer binder known as R twenty LM. And then you have your composite fuel. Thank you for watching the Weekend Science Guy. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe on the way out for more awesome science videos that I know you love.